In the beginning, there was Ultima, and Lord British saw that it was good. Ultimas 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 were soon to follow, and they too were good. Though I use the word good lightly in relation to Ultima 2, which is the only Ultima game in which you can visit the city of San Antonio. Then Lord British went off to make the world of Ultima games, but that's not the point. It was about that same time that the Ultima series branched off into Ultima Underworld, which many computer enthusiasts believe was one of the first very sophisticated 3D games to really take off for PC. But it's not the engine I care about, and I'm sorry if I'm not being entirely clear with my train of thought. The reason I bring up Ultima Underworld is that, while it's a 3D action RPG, the major accomplishment it had was the fact that, like the other Ultimas before and after it, everything's interactive. You can pick up and throw just about anything that's lying around. You can talk to people, cast spells by assembling runes and reagents, and most importantly, you can stab bats in the face with a rapier in high definition, 256 color VGA. You may be wondering where we're going with this, but just bear with us for a moment. The history of this is fairly important, if for no other reason than to establish a timeline. From the birth of Ultima Underworld, we also got the first Elder Scrolls game, Arena, which was supposedly built with the same sort of spell-casting, people-conversing, bat-stabbing RPG gameplay we've come to expect from Underworld. I say supposedly, because while I've played Arena, I only once managed to get out of the Imperial Underground prison and died because I still had my weapon drawn and a town guard decided I looked funny and killed me. Oh! 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 Yes, this is all very interesting in a Yahtzee-esque manner, but I really feel it's time to get to the bloody point. There's some similarities here. Both Underworld and Arena took place in the first person, had real-time 3D engines, had mouse-controlled interfaces, and allowed you to stab things in the face with swords and cast spells. And while System Shock and a bunch of other games tried similar approaches to the interfaces, they were sorely lacking in the face stabbery, choosing instead to give you guns and lasers, and more explosives than you would ever need to destroy anything in the universe, ever. And then there was Daggerfall. But no, this video isn't about the freaking Elder Scrolls games. It's about another similar looking game that got released a few months after as Shareware, Amulets and Armor. True to its title, Amulets and Armor offers players a wide selection of heavy metallic clothing with which to protect themselves, and a selection of magical necklace-type items that give you silly effects like cleats. Not described in the game's titles, the large amount of weapons you get like swords, daggers, maces, and the world's fastest crossbow, and my personal favorite, a metal shod staff known only as the shtick. And yes, the game does allow you to stab things in the face, which is just fine with me, perhaps even making up for the game's blatant lack of production values. Oh wait, it's shareware. But then it's from 1997, which was about when people finally started to realize that DOS was older than they were, and the uneducated masses began buying games because the back of the box says, LENS FLARE! Amulets and Armor was designed by a little group called United Software Artists, unfortunately not linked to the company that once made James Bond movies. It's a first-person RPG that lets you cast spells from runes, carry a metric assload of things in your extra-dimensional backpack, and of course, stab things in the face. You think we said stab things in the face enough times? And now that I've satisfied my personal requirement of making this video's intro longer than Moby Dick, it's time to get on with the gameplay footage already. The following highlights reel features me testing Amulets and Armor's multiplayer cooperative play, in 1997 already a sad rarity, with my brother and fellow crapware enthusiast X-Factor. You'll probably know his voice as the one that doesn't sound perpetually bored and Ben Steinish, but enough talk. Defend thyself! Okay, let's pitch all this random crap out. La 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 la. The defining moment of any game of Amulets and Armor. Emptying your journal of tutorial pages. Admittedly, sometimes they can come in handy, but not for me. Oops, I just threw all my spells out. Oh well. <laughs> eh, whatever. I'm sure you've got the same spells as me. Arcane, right? Uh, is that the tree? Guardians of the groves are masters of the bow and allies of the druids. Why, thank you. Yet why is this just laying around next to a dead elf? Maybe the elf was, uh, whatever you just said. <laughs> Not an ally of the druids, uh, perhaps? Yes. And so they killed him? Yes. So yeah, I have no idea where we're going now. Ah! It's an elf. Die, you prissy bitch! There is nothing in this pool. Let's move on. Pew. Pew. Die! Uh, crap, I think I might have just hit you a few times there. Ow. 
Yep. No friendly fire. Watch out! -a -tat -a -tat. I'm dead. Sweet. Yeah, I just saw you respawn. You are avenged, my brother. Bunny hop. I'll just smash out this glass window. Oh. That's right, you can't do that. Because it's just a transparent wall. Whoa, what the crap? There's a monk of ah, some type. Kill the monk! Plinking with crossbow. What is this he dropped? Clear potion. You know what? I bet this is just a water bottle. Another monk, which I will now stab with this staff. And there's another staff. Steal that one, too. Okay, so first things first, throw all the tutorial scrolls out. I'll make a communal pile over here. Defend Nightmare! Defend Nightmare! I'm assuming you noticed what I named my character. <laughs> yeah. There it is, F4! You feel more experienced. I know I do. Remember, attack the ones that look like big targets. Oh yeah, it doesn't really help that they've got a big red X on their back. I'm dead. My favorite part of this game is, he, as long as you're playing multiplayer, well, hell, even if you're playing single player, the only penalty you take from dying is you lose magic points, and you drop every single item in your inventory. Which really is not that horrible a thing, because you can just go right back and pick everything up. These knights are decidedly, uh, X-rated. <laughs> this game has a habit of sticking you in really dark rooms when you spawn. Oh god, I remember this level now. Yeah, this is another one of those areas in which the ring of water walking would come in kind of handy. Num flashback. You know, eh, there goes me. I would think it's really funny if we got to the end of this game and discovered that Exegus was actually a tool of the Guardian from Ultima or something, you know? You would best yeah. not do that, Knight. Where'd my stuff go? Is that my stuff down here? It must be. <laughs> you can still do that while you're dead. How are you doing it twice like that? F4 repeatedly. I wonder if these guys will shoot each other by accident. I love it when you kill the, the riders that you kill the horse, too. Yeah, they all just kind of collapse into a big heap that takes up doorways and looks ugly. Well, judging from our experiences, you would think we're going to tell you it's a horrible game and don't bother wasting your time, right? Wrong. True, it's got some major problems, balance issues, hilariously bad graphics, netcode glitches, did I mention balance issues? But the point is, if you're not looking at it too seriously, it really isn't that bad and can actually be a lot of fun. I actually rather like this game. I wouldn't go so far as to say that it's the best first person RPG ever, and if I did, I'm sure Ultima Underworld and Morrowind would love to have a word with me. But this game is absolutely positively not a piece of skin dissolving eye melting shite. Judging from the ensuing chaos, I don't know how wise it would be to try and play with the maximum of four players, but then again... Okay, we'll still send a code three.